Hi, it's Gary. Welcome to today's video. Today, it's time to look at the pens that I've got inked up, but aren't really using for this month. So these are pens that have got ink in them, but they're not in my daily, everyday carry rotation. We'll take a quick look at them, and then we'll move on to the next one. So we're going to start with the cheapest pen of the lot. This is the Jinhao 80. There we go. Very, very similar to a Lamy 2000, isn't it? Looks very, well, nearly identical. Biggest difference is the nib. It's a steel nib, and this is more of a Lamy style nib. I've got a fine nib on here. I do intend to record a video sometime in the next month or so, where I actually swap the nib for a Lamy nib and see how we go. This one, cartridge converter. It's a very, very light pen. There's hardly any weight to it. So this is a... Jinhao 80 with a fine nib. The ink in here is by Diamine and it's right as blood. Cost for this pen is five Aussie dollars. As you can see here, the line it puts down very, very thin. I would say tending even it even towards extra fine rather than fine even. Very, very thin line, but it writes well and it writes consistently. Not a bad pen when you consider it was five Aussie dollars. We're sticking with Jinhao for the next one. We're going to the Jinhao 9019. A monster of a pen, isn't it? Just look at this beast. I love the transparent nature of this. This, this is a transparent blue color. Very big pen. Look at this width on that section very very comfortable to use if you've got things like arthritis and where you need that little bit more width this is really nice to use the nib it's a number eight size nib we go there's a gin home and it's a medium nib as you can see because it's transparent cartridge converter new style of converter for gen how a little bit heavier than the gin how 80 but not a lot heavier for me it's this width which makes a difference so this is a Jinhao 9019 with a medium nib. The ink is by Dominant Industry. And it's called Lake. Very nice, very reminiscent of Diamine Marine and Diamine Aqua Lagoon. Price for this pen you're looking at about 12 Aussie dollars. The prices I quote, they are excluding shipping because shipping can be variable. So that's a Jinhao 9019. Now, apologies if you hear some background noise. I will do my best to edit it out. The neighbors are cut their grass, so, you know, that's down to them to do that. Up next, we've got a Keiko Edge. Very similar to the Jinhao 80 in terms of shape and size. A little bit heavier. The bigger, biggest difference, I'm going to fetch out that Jinhao 80 just so you can see them side by side, is the clip. So you can see there, very different clip styles. I have done a separate video where I explore these and also the Lamy 2000. That's going to be coming up in the next month or so. It's a nice pen, nice feeling pen. Got a standard size nib on there. I would say num size number five by the look of it. Maybe maybe 5.5. .5. Definitely not a number six nib. Another one cartridge converter. Feels nice in the hand section. Yeah, a little bit on the thin side. So this is the Keiko Edge. Just look at the line this puts down there. It's very, very nice. Very juicy. And this is a medium nib. And the ink. Is diamine writer's blood? Do like this, it's a very nice color. Price for this pen 22 Aussie dollars when I checked the price a couple of weeks ago. So that's the Keiko Edge. Up next, a pen that most people will know of the Lamy Safari. This is in the charcoal. I've got a bit of a love hate relationship with the Safari. I just don't know what it is about it. I just can't get on with it. I love the way it writes, but it just doesn't feel right to me. But then I've got an AL Star 
which I absolutely love using. The AL Star is the same shape, just different material. It's weird, isn't it? Cartridge converter. Had to buy the converter separately. And here we've got a broad Lamy nib. This is a nib I'm going to try swapping with on that Jin How 80. Be interesting to see how that goes. So we've got here a Lamy Safari with a broad nib. The ink in here is another dye mine ink and it's ash. This was uh, an ink vent ink from 2021, I believe. Price for this pen. You're looking at about 40 Aussie dollars. Very nice though. I say it's weird. I just don't like using it, but I love the line it puts down, which is why I'm hoping by swapping it with the Jin How 80, that may help a little bit. So that's the Lamy Safari. Another pen a lot of people will know, the Twisby Eco. This one's in the green color. Demonstrator pen. A load of ink in here at the moment, so you can't really see the ink sloshing too much, but when it gets lower, I love seeing the ink as you do this. It looks really nice. Very utilitarian pen. You know, it's one of the pens I would recommend as a good starter pen. Piston filling pen. This is the piston mechanism. Obviously, I'm not going to work it. The barrel, we lose about a third of the barrel for the mechanism, but then we get loads of ink in here. I love the transparent section. I love being able to see through and see what's going on. Then we've got here the Twisby nib, made for them by Yoho. This one's a 1.1 stub nib. So we've got here a Twisby. The nib on this is so soft and bouncy. Eco, it's a 1.1. The ink we've got in here is by Diamine. And it's Black Ivy. So it's a very dark green color. Beauty of this stub, uh, I'll just do a quick demo there with the stub. So you can see the down lines wider than the across lines. Price wise, we're looking at 59 Aussie dollars. Again, it's very utilitarian, does what it says on the box, it writes. I've got a number of ecos. I usually have at least one inked up at all times. So that's the Twisby Eco. We're going back to China. This is the Pen BBS 487. This is in the Corderite pattern. So it's mainly transparent, but then we've got these hints of blues and whites. Hard to see because the body's quite full. When I bought this, I bought it for this rather unique filling mechanism. It's a what they call a magnetic filler. So you would attach the top of the cap, which has got a magnet to this ring here. You would pull it down, which would draw this ring down, pull it back up, which would then draw the ink into the pen. It's really ingenious idea. Just doesn't work. No matter what I do, I cannot get this to move. So this is jammed down there, which is a good thing because the end cap came out. I don't know when it came out or how, but I lost the end cap. I have tried putting a bit of glue in there. I need to put some more in to seal that better. But this disc, it seals it anyway. Got a very nice nib on here. I love the nib on this pen. It's such a nice nib to use. So it's a shame about the filling mechanism. So to fill it, what I do is I unscrew the section and I just eye dropper it, which is fine because, you know, it works. So this is a Pen BBS 487. The nib on here is fine. I do think it's on the wider side of fine. The ink is by Diamine. Very Diamine heavy at the moment, aren't we? And it's Silent Night. So this is an ink from the 2022 Inkvent calendar. Price for this pen. Now, I couldn't find it when I was looking now, so I don't think they sell this model anymore. But when I bought it, it was 65 Aussie dollars. And I've had this about two and a half, maybe even three years now. It's another one of those pens. I absolutely love it. It's just a shame that filling mechanism doesn't work as it should do. So that's a pen BBS 487. My next pen, this is the last of my under 100 Aussie dollar pens. There's not a lot of ink in here, so I'm hoping it will write. This is the Pilot Prera. This is a transparent version. Love this, being able to see the ink. As you can see there, there's a little bit of ink, which you can see sloshing around. Hopefully there's enough in there to do my writing. Then this will be getting cleaned out. 
I like the fact here with the cap, we've got this like very tra white translucent, so you can't actually see the nib. But what that is, that's actually a liner inside the cap. So that helps to prevent the nib from drying out. This is a pocket pen, it's a small pen. So unposted, very small. Post it, does start to feel back heavy. There's a bit of weight in that cap, but it's nice now, it feels nice. Got a steel nib there. Writes really well. So this is a Pilot Prera with a medium nib. The ink is by Robert Oster and it's Tranquility. Lovely ink, one of my favourite inks. Price wise, about 76 Aussie dollars, but then I had to pay extra for the converter. This is a Com40 converter. So that's a Pilot Pereira. Just dropping in to interrupt your regular programming. Would you like to help support the channel? If so, please consider joining as a member. As a member, you'll get early access to my videos. I normally upload them a couple of days before they go out, and as soon as they're uploaded, they'll be released to members. There'll also be a shout out at the end of the videos. And then as we get the members coming in, we'll actually chat among ourselves and work out what other perks, what other things you'd like me to add in. You know, would you like maybe a monthly live chat just for members? All down to us. So please, if you can, consider joining the channel. A link will be in the description down below. Now we're going to take a look at pens over 100 Aussie dollars. So the first one is the beast of a pen. The big boy, the Hulk, the Ranga Model 5. This is an exceptionally large pen. I'm just going to fetch out that Pereira, just so you can see them side by side. Just look at the size difference. Comical, isn't it? I love this pen. Odd, you order it direct from Ranga. I got this as part of a group buy. It's a big pen no matter how you look at it. Unposted, massive still. Nice wide section. Got a lip at the bottom of the section. It does post... I don't know why you'd want to, because it's just unusable posted, in my opinion. It's that long. Cartridge converter. Loads and loads of threads on there. So this is a pen, if you wanted, I think you could eyedropper it. I've got no intention of doing that. If I did that, I don't think it'd run out of ink for about a year. And on here, I've got a number six sized nib. If I was to buy another one, which I may do, because I do like it, I may order a number eight sized nib in the future, because... This number six looks a bit out of proportion to the rest of the pen, doesn't it? So this is a Ranga Model 5. It's got a broad nib on it. The ink is by Dominant Industry. We've already seen this one today. And it's called Lake. Price for this pen, when I got it, was 142 Aussie dollars. I'm expecting that would have gone up in price now. It's an Indian made pen, and one of the things I will say, it does have a slight odour to it. It's not unpleasant, but even after you know a couple of years, it's still there. I love this green swirl pattern as well. Anyway, let me put that away. That's a Ranga Model 5. Next up, we've got a Laban 325. This is in Cambridge Brown. Beautiful brown here in, in the cap and in the end finials. Then in the body, look at this. It's, yes, we've got some browns, but we've got this pearlescent in it. Now look at the way that's shining. There it looks nearly orange to me. Going around. Got browns, we've got whites. And I say we've got this gorgeous pearlescent, pearlescence to it. It's another one, cartridge converter comes with a converter we've got the brown in the section and we've got a number six size nib again a nib i believe made by yoho it's a nice fit in the hand section does feel a little bit on the narrow side so that's one of my biggest quibbles about this so we've got here a laban 325 with a broad nib the ink is by robert toster And it's called Aussie Brown. Price for this pen, 
146 Aussie dollars. I do think this ink is a very good match for the pen. I know some people say I shouldn't do it, but I do like matchy-matchy with my inks. Sometimes I don't. Sometimes I do put something different in, but most of the time I use matching inks. And this one to me is a very good match. So that's the Laban 325. Over to Japan now for our first gold nibbed pen. This is the Pilot E95S. Some places called the Pilot Elite. This is burgundy and champagne. I still don't know why they call this champagne. It's more silver than champagne coloured to me. They must get some weird champagne in Japan. That's all I can think of. Another pocket pen. A bit on the large side for a pocket pen, so it's getting towards the end of that. If you use it unposted, it is tiny. Once you post it, it's beautiful. One of my favourite pens, this. If we unscrew, we would see what we've got in here is a cartridge. So I actually fill this using this cartridge. So when this is empty, I clean it out, and then I just fill it with my blunt nose syringe with whatever ink I want. It will take a Com40. The problem is, when you put the Com40 in, it actually goes quite deep before it latches onto the mechanism for, for the feed. And what that means is you can only see the actual twist mechanism. You can't see your ink level. So this is why I tend to use a cartridge. Let's pop that back on. It is a fairly narrow feeling pen. There's no lip or anything. This section, you know, very, very long. Doesn't bother me. You get used to it. Got this gorgeous inlaid nib as well. Again, looks very nice. So this is the Pilot. E95S with a medium and it's 14 karat gold. The ink in here is by Diamine and it's a Seize the Night. This is another ink from the 2021 ink vent calendar. Price for this pen 215 Aussie dollars. I think this is exceptionally good value for the pen that you're getting. And because of the size of it, I say it works as a pocket pen as well, which is really convenient. So that's a Pilot E95S. Next up, we're going to Italy and we're going for a Leonardo pen. This is the Leonardo Magica and the color is called Meal or Honey. Piston filling pen, very nice pen. I just love the way it looks there. Look at the size of that ink window, absolutely perfect ink window. You can see there a little bit of the ink sloshing around as I move it. There's a lot of ink in here. A very nice pen. I say piston mechanism, so I'm not going to use it. The material continues down through the section. Then here we've got a steel nib, gold coloured, but this is a Leonardo nib. Again, I believe made by Yoho for Leonardo. Beautiful pen. Almost perfect in terms of size. It feels very nice in the hand. My fingers aren't squashed when I'm holding it. Got that little bit of a lip. I do wish they'd used the old style sections that they had, like I've got on my Leonardo Memento Zero Grande, which we'll see in a minute. But it's still, it's livable. So this is a Leonardo. And it's the Magico. Broad nib on here. The ink, guess what? It's a dye mine ink. And it's candlelight. Again, another 2021 ink vent ink. Price wise, we take a little jump up to 272 Aussie dollars. It's a very nice pen though, writes really nicely. I do like the shape of it, it just looks pretty to look at. So that's a Leonardo Magico. Coming up next, one of my newer editions, the Lamy 2000. We've already seen earlier on the Jin Hawaiti and the Keiko Wedge, which look shape-wise very similar to this, but this one is the original, the 2000. Piston filling pen. Not going to work the mechanism. I know it's very hard to see, but just about there, let me get this into the camera, just about here, where my thumb is, that's where the filling mechanism joins the body. It's very hard to see it's made with such precision. We've got little tiny ink window. It's all right. 
not perfect for me. I would prefer it wider, but, but it does what it's meant to. We've got a section where we've got this silver color. It really fetches out this gorgeous, it's not really black. It's a, like a dark gray mackerel on material. But the section is nice. Fits nice in the hand. You can post it if you want. I don't. I use unposted. I always worry when I'm posting a piston filler if I might be posting it onto the mechanism. This one it doesn't. It feels like it's actually attaching to the body. The nib on here is a broad nib. It's also a gold nib. Very nice. Writes with a stub nature. Really confused me when I first got this. I thought, hang on, have they sent me the wrong pen? But when I looked at it, I've actually looked, taken the nib out. You can do it, it's a bit fiddly, and it is a broad nib. So we've got here a Lamy 2000 with a broad nib. The ink is by Diamine, and it's writer's blood. Very, very smooth. You hardly know you're writing with this, it just glides over the paper. As I say, it's got this broadness and this stubbiness to it. I think that looks very nice. Price-wise, we're looking at 316 Aussie dollars. This is a pen for years. It's been in and out of my various shopping carts. Eventually, I pulled the trigger. Ever so glad I did. Really loving this pen. So that's the Lamy 2000. Back to Japan for this next pen. This one is the Sailor Pro Gear Slim. So the smallest of the Pro Gear line. The colour of this is blue-green nebula, and it's the colour which drew me to it. It's like a nice tealy type colour, but then you've got silver specks to show stars within a, a nebula. Very nice. Slightly transparent. Cartridge converter. Metal fitting, so not something you'd even think about eyedropping, which I think is a shame. I think it would be nice to be able to eyedropper this, especially with the translucency, you know, just to see that ink there. Another nib with a 14 karat gold nib. I didn't write it on the Lamy. Let me just fix that. I'm going to put it over here. So this is 14k gold. Yep. So we've got a 14 karat gold nib on it. This is a Japanese nib though. So or an, an Asian nib. So it's a th very much thinner line than we see with the European nibs, which we'll see in a second when we write with it. It's just about usable, unposted. I tend to post this pen. I find I need that extra little bit of length in it just to make it feel comfortable. The cap, not overly heavy, so it doesn't add a lot of weight. So we've got here a Sailor. Oh, this is one of my favorite nibs. Beautiful feedback on this. Pro Gear Slim. Broad, 14 karat gold. The nib, it's got a stiffness to it. More like writing with a pencil than writing with most of my other fountain pens. As I say, it's one of my favourite nibs, even though it's a small nib. The ink in here is by Robert Hoster. And it's Tranquility. Beautiful colouring. As I say, we already saw that in the Pilot Pereira. Price-wise... You're looking at 355 Aussie dollars. Sailor pens, they're not cheap. This is the only gold nibbed sailor I've got. I've also got a steel one. I'd love to be able to get one of the, one of like a king of pen, or even just the standard sizes, just to be able to compare, but they're just out of my price range. They're so expensive. So that's the Sailor Pro Gear Slim. Our final pen, back to Italy and back to Leonardo. This is the Leonardo Memento Zero Grande. So this is very similar shape to the Magico, but bigger. Nice pen, very comfortable pen to use. Was my first expensive pen that I bought. Really glad I did because I love it. It's a piston mechanism. So you've got a piston mechanism here. You've got the body here where it's absolutely chock-a-block with ink, or I hope it is. That's one of the downsides with this. I'll explain that in a second. The material, this lovely spaghetti pattern. It's called Dark Hawaii. Looks very nice. So one of the issues with this, it's a piston filler, filler, as I said. No ink window. No idea how much ink is in here. And I have had times when I've been sat there, eagerly writing away, and it just stops writing because it's ran out of ink, and I had no idea it was going to do that. 
It's got this old style Leonardo section. I personally like this. I hold my pens down near the bottom of the section. So I find this extremely comfortable because the way that it's designed, my finger and my thumb just rest perfectly following the contours of this is ever so nice. Steel nib. Okay, again, your homemade nib. So we've got a Leonardo. I'm just going to put MZ, Grande. MZ from Memento Zero. It's got a medium nib. The ink is by Diamine. And it's Jack Frost. A little bit of an issue there. And the cost for this pen is 377 Aussie dollars. Beautiful pen. Now, I did have a couple of little issues. This has been sat in my pen case nearly a month without being used. And also the way I'm recording my hand isn't at a natural angle. So sometimes I do get the, the, the nib slightly off its sweet spot. And I think that's what happened there. Normally I don't have any issues with this. So that's a Leonardo Memento Zero Grande. Just going to move this down so we can see all the pens and inks names there. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. What pens and inks have you got inked up this month? Are there any like me where they're just sat in the pen case because they're not in your daily rotation? Why not drop a comment down below? Let's kickstart the conversation. Please hit the thumbs up button. Every time you like, every time you comment, just helps with the YouTube algorithm. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel so that you can get new videos as I release them. I'll talk to you again soon.